Hello and welcome to Flying Bobbins. I'm Liz and I have just finished making my Nova coat by Paper Cut Patterns. I am really pleased with it. It's made with 100% boiled wool and the best thing is the gorgeous lining that it has that really makes this coat stand out. Um, now this, the Nova coat is one of those patterns that everybody wants to make. If you are a dressmaker, if you enjoy sewing and you want to um, make your first foray into making your own coat, this is an absolutely fantastic pattern to get you going. It's really quite straightforward to make, there's nothing too tricky here and using the boiled wool, again, it's a nice easy fabric to work with. Now, if you fancy making this coat yourself, um, but you're a bit daunted by the prospect, then I have a full video tutorial available, which you can get access to by buying the, uh, the video tutorial from flyingbobbins.com. We're gonna put a link down below in the descriptions. Excuse my voice, I have a cold, it's that time of year, um, but I'm gonna be nice and wrapped up warm in my lovely new 100% um, wool coat, a little bit of luxury to cheer me up and warm me up on this cold day. Um, I'm going to talk you through everything from choosing your size, cutting out the paper pattern, cutting out your fabric, and each element of the, of the sew along, from um, slip stitching your lining in place to um, bagging out to making the pockets. Everything's going to be covered in the video tutorial so that you really can't go wrong. Um, now if you are an um, enthusiastic dressmaker or maybe you're somebody who would love to make your own clothes but you just don't know where to start then I would like to invite you to join my sew along club which is the Flying Bobbins High Five Sew Along Club. More details of that can be found at my website flyingbobbins.com again I shall put a description below or a link below for you to um, go and read more into that but it's basically I do a new project every single month it's launched on the 5th of the month hence the Pi Five Club. Um, it's five pounds per month, and that five pounds will buy you access to a new, complete video sew along every month. It's become very, very popular this year. Um, I have covered lots of different projects, and I'm really excited about all the projects that I've got coming up for 2023 as well. Um, if you also want to receive a beautiful, shiny paper pattern through your door every month as well, then you can go for the premium subscription, which is £20 per month, and you will then get your video sew along sent to you as an email link on the 5th of the month, plus through the post, you will get your paper pattern to accompany the video sew along. Now with each sew along that I do, I also accompany that with a selection of kits, and I've got some absolutely beautiful fabrics to show you here, um, some boiled wools in different colors, all with coordinated linings. I've taken a long time to select these um, lining and fabric combos to make sure they look absolutely stunning for you. So I'll talk you through those now. Um, so like I mentioned, this is the Nova Coat by Paper Cut Patterns. It's an iconic pattern. It's one of those, those ones that everyone talks about when they talk about what they want to make in the year. Um, I'm definitely really happy with it. I found the instructions to be extremely clear. Um, each stage you're taken through. Um, there's no kind of um, tricky bits, no surprises, um, so I would definitely say it's a great one to, to give that a try. Um, you need about two and a half metres of fabric, obviously all the instructions are on the, on the pattern there, um, so just, but just to give you an idea, you need about two and a half metres of boiled wool and about 2.3 metres of lining. You also need some interfacing. Um, aside from that, there's no special tools required. For boiled wool, I used a ballpoint needle, a slightly heavier one. I think I used a, a size 90 ballpoint needle. For my lining, because it's quite shiny, I used a Microtex needle. You need a nice sharp needle for your lining. Um, that obviously depends on the lining that you're going to use. Um, sizing wise, I found it came up quite big. And I think looking at other people who've made this, um, a lot of people would say that it does come up quite big. So I went down a size. Um, <clears throat> I made um, the short sleeve and then I changed my mind and recut the sleeve and made it into the long sleeve. I just preferred to be kind of covered up and warm and cosy. Um, but I think for a dinner, like a special occasion jacket, maybe if you're wearing a jacket um, to wear to a wedding in a more um, occasion wear style fabric, the bracelet length sleeve would look also um, really nice. It's quite a bit shorter, the bracelet length sleeve. 
um, but you do have the two sleeve choices um, for this pattern. Um, so yeah, you don't need an overlocker, so it's one of those patterns where it's fully lined, so if you haven't got an overlocker, that's fine, you can just make the entire coat on your um, regular sewing machine, that's another really good plus point. I think it would make a really great gift as well if you've got someone special that you want to make something for. I think this would make a really, really special gift. And actually, comparing what this cost me to make with what um, you would pay in the shops for a 100% wool coat, it's really, really good value um, because you get that really ultra premium look that you pay a lot of money for. Um, the pattern I've got here, I printed off PDFs for my... Um, tutorial so I've got the, um, the plus size pattern here which goes from a size 6 to 14 that's in their curve um, collection um, so when I say 6 to 14 that's the, the paper cut pattern 6 to 14 and that equates to um, a UK size 16 up to 34 so it's a really good range of sizes there so that's the curve version and then the regular version there this goes from size 1 to 8 and that is equivalent to a UK dress size 6 up to 20. I'd normally measure up as a size 10, and in fact I went down to a size 6 for this coat, so I did go down two sizes. An 8 would have been fine as well, actually, but I think if you're in between sizes on this pattern, definitely go down um, a size. And if you're unsure before you cut into expensive fabric, maybe make yourself a toile um, out of some cheaper fabric, just to check for fit first before you cut into expensive fabric. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I would definitely recommend this pattern for anyone wanting to make a coat. And if you want to sew along with me, again, more descriptions, uh, more details and links in the descriptions below. Let me show you some of the fabrics I've got in because I'm actually really excited for these. I'll start at this end of the table and work my way along. So first of all, the checks. These are really soft, extra soft brushed checks available in a lovely, um, tan and cream colour, very traditional and classic and I've put that with a viscose twill fabric in the champagne gold so this is a beautiful twill lining, really nice quality and I think that the checks will work really well in this oversized um, coat shape because they won't be broken up by lots of seams, you know, you'll really get to see the check in all its glory and that's in a wool blend and it's ultra ultra soft, I just wish that you could feel how soft this fabric is. And that check is also available in a beautiful blue. <clears throat> so again, lovely and soft, uh, more of a traditional uh, blue and gray color palette with a lovely gray viscose twill lining there. Now moving on to the boiled wools. First of all, we've got the boiled wool in navy, in, which is a gorgeous um, French navy and in this aqua colour, which is the most popular by far. Um, from the pre-orders I've received on these coat kits, this has been my best seller. It's just such a gorgeous colour and it's so stunning. But what's really exciting is how beautifully these fabrics go with this lining here. This is a Lady McElroy lining and it just, I think it's gonna look so special to have either of these two boiled wool fabrics with this beautiful lining. It's just, you know, way above and beyond what you could buy in the shops. And you'll get that absolute buzz from people asking you, where on earth did you get that gorgeous coat? And you can say, well, I made it myself. I mean, what a buzz. And it's just so, so lovely. I just love this combination. <laughs> um, so yeah, and blue kind of goes with everything. So really popular choice there. And then I have the red, which I made for myself. Red is my favourite colour. I'm always drawn to red. It's December, it's the 1st of December today and it feels festive and um, warming and luxurious. And the boiled wool is just so good at taking on all these colours. And that's the lining there that I've put with my red coat, which just, it reminds me a little bit of Dolce & Gabbana, that fabric. Um, again, a Lady McElroy, very lovely quality beautiful digital print, really, really such a masterpiece. Um, their florals are outstanding. So I think that would look really gorgeous together. And then just one more colour to show you, which is this absolutely stunning magenta pink. Um, absolutely the hot colour of the season is pink. So you can really buy into that trend with this gorgeous magenta wool. 
very flattering. It's got more of a bluey purple tone rather than a yellowy tone, which is more flattering for most skin types. Um, for most skin colours, um, it will really kind of warm up your complexion. It's really beautiful. And then that goes with this, again, Lady Makoa Digital Floral, which just is got so much detail and so many colours um, going on in that, that again, that will make such a stunning lining with that magenta um, coat there. So all of these are going to be available as kits. Let's start by taking a look at the pattern. So this is the pattern that I've put together for you. This is a print off of the PDF that I got from Paper Cut Patterns. Um, if you've got the larger sizes, which go from a six to 14, then this is what your front of your envelope will look like. If you've got the regular sizes, which goes from a one to an eight, which is a UK six to 20, um, that will look like that. So the larger one is a UK um, approximately size 16 to 34 and the regular one is UK approximately size 6 to 20. So I'm going to use the regular size today to make my coat. So when you open your envelope you'll find inside stapled together instructions on how to make the coat and then with the regular size you have three bits of A0 paper with your pattern printed on it. For the larger size you'll have four bits. So the first thing to do is if you turn to page four and you'll see that you've got the metric and imperial measurements for this coat. They run their sizes from a one to eight, which is equivalent, um, like I said, to approximately a UK size six to 20. So if you think of it as six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, you can write that on there as well if you want, just so that you can get your bearings with the UK um, size equivalents. Now I'm normally a UK 10 in coat, so size three. And actually if I measure my bust, waist and hips, then I do fall within this um, um, number three size here. Um, now this will tell you how much fabric you you require you you will need here whether it's um, a longer shorter length um, and then you can look down to see how much fabric you need and how much lining you need and how much interfacing you need as well and it's just the same table on the right hand side you have imperial measurements and on the left hand side you have metric measurements whether you prefer to work in inches or in centimeters over here um, now, one thing to think about with this coat is it does come up big. That is the design of the coat. It's an oversized garment. So it's this kind of wraparound cocoon shape, which has got lots and lots of space built into the design. So, you know, when you're looking at this, when I'm looking at this online, a lot of people do say that they tend to go down a size. So if when you're measuring your bust, waist and hips and you're in between, go down a size rather than up. Now, what I decided to do was to actually make a toile. So I've cut out a number size three and I've made a toile, which I'm gonna talk you through now. So here's my toile that I made and I made this using old curtains. So these curtains were being ripped out of a friend's house. They were just going, they were destined for the skip. So I sort of saved them and thought these would be pretty good for experimenting with. So. The, um, you can see there's two different designs. This is by no means a wearable toile. Um, this is just something that I used to practice the pattern and to get the shape and the fit right. So I cut out my size three pattern, which I'll talk you through that in a minute. And then I just very quickly whipped this up. So I don't worry about putting on interfacing. I don't worry about lining. I don't worry about any fancy details. I just do the main seams. I don't hem it or anything like that just to get the overall shape. First of all, it's a good idea because you can practice the pattern. Secondly, you can actually then try it on and it might take a few hours, but it's kind of that if you're using an expensive coat fabric and you're not sure of how it's going to look on you or whether you want to change the style up, maybe make it smaller, etc., then it's a good way of just being able to really visualize how that coat is going to look. Um, so there, that's my toy, I've just made out of, of some old curtains. So you could go to a charity shop and pick up some old curtains. Um, you could maybe use some old curtain linings, something you were going to throw out um, just, to, just to make up your toile. So I've made mine, if I try that on now. So I'm trying this on over a chunky jumper. That's the thing that I'm likely to wear underneath my coat. Um, I do feel like I've got a lot of room here. Um, so I do feel like it comes up 
big on me. So that's the first thing I've learnt. I also feel that the sleeve is really quite long. Now obviously I will have a seam allowance there, but the seam allowance on this pattern is only one centimetre. So you sew the facing to the sleeve and turn it up just by the one centimetre um, because there's a separate facing. So the sleeve I do feel is a bit long on me as well. Um, the position of the pockets is about right. That's about comfortable. So the lengthwise is okay. Um, and length overall length of the coat is um, I'm happy with. So it's just really the fact that it does feel a little bit big on me, especially in a heavier wool fabric. I might feel a bit drowned. Um, I can easily bring the front together and there's plenty of room there even though I've got a chunky jumper on I've still got lots and lots of room in this coat um, so I think there'll be no harm in me actually going down a size from the three that I cut also if I check the the hem there again that hem has a ample overlap so I'm not going to by going down a size I'm not going to be compromising on um, not you know the, the coat not being able to to close at the front at all so this design is just an edge to edge design there there aren't any fastenings so if i just pull this edge to edge like this i do feel that i could still go down a size so i think that's what i'm going to do um, so it's really worth making this twirl just so that i can physically see how it looks um, check the length check the proportions, check the sleeve length, and of course check the size as well. If you don't want to make a twirl, that's absolutely fine because it is a bit more time consuming. If you want to jump straight in, that's absolutely fine. There are two tips that I'm going to give for you um, for when you're deciding your size. So the first one is really look at the finished garment measurements down at the bottom of this page. This is going to help you. Grab a um, tape measure and just hold it around your body at these measurements just to see um you know so you've got your bust you've got your hem circumference for the longer length and the shorter length you've got your finished length for the longer length and the shorter length and your sleeve length for the longer length and the shorter length so just you know take that bust measurement for me if i was making a three it'd be 122 centimeters or 48 inches and hold that tape measure around your body and just see how does that look um if in doubt go down a size definitely with this pattern um you can, of course, make adjustments as you go along as well. Um, so that's the other thing. One other tip would be to take your pattern, lay it out flat on your table, grab a coat that you know fits you, maybe if not a coat, a cardigan. Um, if you've got something with that ovoid uh, kind of cocoon shape, all the better. You can then lay that down on top and see which size does that correspond to. And don't forget that this pattern does include a one centimetre seam allowance, so allow for that as well. We've got three pieces of A0 paper for this pattern and when you look at the pattern pieces themselves these really are quite unusual shapes um, so do take care when cutting out uh, all will become clear as we construct the coat now you've got your sizes numbered one through two seven and eight so seven and eight is the same size just on that line there each line is slightly different. You've got a long dash, a solid line, a short dash, and so on and so forth. Um, my suggestion for this, because they are unusual pattern shapes, is to grab a highlighter and trace. So if I'm making a size three, I would trace that line down there and follow that all the way around. You'll see in some areas that the lines are printed on top of each other, and then in other areas they, they do split apart. So just pay attention to which line you're cutting, and it does make it that little bit easier if you go over the top first with a highlighter. If you're making the jacket, you're going to cut this line here. If you're making the coat, you're going to cut the longer line. Um, this little kick out here is just in order to create the hem, so that when that folds up, it will fit into this line here. Uh, what I did when I cut mine out was I would just follow that line and then kick out there, cut back down here, and then I'll fold that behind to get a smooth line there. That means that if at a later date I want to make the jacket, I've got that bit attached and I can just unfold it. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. So you've got your upper front and your lower front coat there. Then we have got your centre back here and your side back and then you've got your long and short sleeve facings and your front neck fusing and then finally you've got a separate piece for your front lining and you've got your sleeve there 
So all of my pieces of paper are cut out. Let's talk you through them so that you can see what they are. So piece number one is the upper front. So this looks like a very unusual shape. i move that out of the way. But basically what happens here is that the way you think about it is that this is your neckline. This bit folds back. So that's the center front of your coat there. There's your pocket and this fits to your lower half and this bit here fits to your sleeve. So it's a really unusual shape, but that is whatever style you're doing, you're going to need that. So that's number one, which is the upper front. Then we've got the lower front and this again, a very unusual shape, but this sort of sits on top like this to create the front of your coat. So you've got your upper and lower front and the pockets are just grown on there. Then we've got the back. So here is your centre back piece. So this is cut on the fold. This is the line that would run directly from the centre back of your neck down your spine, so to speak. So this is the centre back of your coat here where it says cut on fold. This is piece number three. And you just cut one of those on the fold. And then you have the side back. So if I bring this piece back here, you can see how this fits together with this like there to create that shape across the back. So those two pieces, you've got an upper and lower front, and then you've got a center back and a side back. Then of course you have your sleeve and your sleeve, you can cut long or short. I'm going for the short sleeve. You've got your neck facing, which is piece number six. You've got your lining, which is uh, your front lining, which is piece number seven. The back lining you will cut using the same piece as the back itself. You've got the piece number eight, which you only cut out of interfacing. That's for the center front there. And then you've got pieces nine and 10, which are your short sleeve and your long sleeve facing. So if you are cutting the short sleeve, you will cut the short sleeve facing. If you are cutting the long sleeve, you will cut the long sleeve facing. So I'm not going to need number 10, but you would need number 10 if you were doing the long sleeve. And you can see that this just fits on there. So that's the facing for that sleeve opening there. So those are all my pieces. I'm now ready to um, cut, out my, um, cut out my fabric. So before I start on my fabric, just, just a couple of additional notes. If I wanted to lengthen or shorten this sleeve, then what I would do is I would cut a line from the notch here in an arch shape to the notch here. And then I would split this apart in order to lengthen it or I would overlap it in order to shorten it. You just need to, to um, true off these lines here to make sure they're straight. But that is how, so I would trace this arch shape here, mimic the, the shape here by cutting across there. And then you're either going to overlap or you're going to stretch out, adding a bit in between to lengthen or to shorten the sleeve. And what this does is by lengthening it or shortening it by slashing and splitting or overlapping, you're keeping this the same. So you're keeping the style of the coat the same. You're keeping um, this the, the same line here. And that means that your um, facing will also fit. Obviously, if you just decide, oh, I want my coat to be shorter, I'm just going to chop it off. Um, then you're going to spoil this cuff shape. And you certainly don't want to adjust this line here because this is your... Uh, where it fits to your other piece. So you just lengthen or shorten by cutting and splitting or, or squeezing together.